Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for worshiping with us this beautiful spring morning. Um, this is Consecration Sunday, the Sunday we consecrate our gifts and our pledges to the, the work of God. And we are so glad we have, you might have noticed, a barbecue fire is already a blazing out there. Um, all are invited to enjoy in a feast of uh, consecration luncheon and brunch afterwards as well. Um, if you will, take a moment to fill out your welcome cards that, where we register our attendance in those cards that are in the pews, and we hand those in during our times of offering. Um, you can also fill out, if you will, your pledge cards if you have not already done so, and those can be brought here to be consecrated in prayer during this service for the ministries of 2022 as we go forward. So um, we invite you to take an opportunity to do that as well. Um, this is also a wonderful time of year. We are in the season of Lent and exploring the theme of receiving grace. And this year, this uh, Sunday, we are talking about the story of Mary washing the feet of Jesus and how he received grace and love from her. We're going to be talking about how we continue to receive and be built up so that we can serve others in the faith as well. Um, I'd like to um, also invite you to the different events of of Holy Week this next Saturday, Coral and Joan are planning an Easter egg hunt. Is that right? Okay, so let's thank them for all of their work. And that's again next Saturday from 9 to 11. We're going to invite the whole community to come and look for eggs and to have to eat egg strata, these wonderful dishes that we, we cook. So whether you'd like to help cook or hide eggs or whatever uh, you can offer, please talk to Coral and Joan about next week's event or just come and join us uh, as well. Um, and then following that, of course, is Palm Sunday the next day. And uh, next Sunday, we will celebrate with palms the, the joyful entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Then that Thursday, we have Holy Thursday worship service on, um, a, uh, I forgot the date. Anyway, Maundy <laughs> Thursday, the Thursday before Easter. And, and that's at 7 p.m. We celebrate with communion and the Last Supper. And we remember foot washing. And then Friday, there's a wonderful, uh, at 7 p.m., a wonderful worship service featuring music from the choir with readings about the path of Christ. So please join us for all of those things. And finally, our Easter celebration on uh, April 17th at our normal worship time, where we will have the Hallelujah Chorus and a celebration of Jesus's resurrection. So please join us for those things. Um, just a couple of other things. We um, are going to have our Bible study change times from 2 p.m. to 1 p.m. If you're in the pastor's Bible study with me, please join us at 1 p.m. Wednesdays instead of 2 p.m. going forward. And at this time, I'd like to um, offer um, uh, an opportunity for our lay leader to share some words with us, an important announcement, of course, that we're going to share today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Superintendent, Reverend Mark M. Nakagawa. Many of you have gotten an email that gave you a lot of this information, but allow me to read this for all of you. Dear members and friends of Anaheim United Methodist Church, as your district superintendent, I write to announce an important change in pastoral leadership that will take place on July 1st. For the past eight years, you have been blessed with the pastoral leadership of Reverend James Dollins. He has led you through meaningful worship, shepherded new educational and outreach ministries, while strengthening the overall administrative and ministry directions of the church. On July 1st, Reverend Dollins will begin a new appointment to the San Carlos United Methodist Church. This decision by the bishop and cabinet is not made lightly. We have observed and appreciated the ministry of Reverend Dollins at Anaheim UMC particularly throughout the past two years of the global pandemic. However, the San Carlos United Methodist Church is in need of a pastor and the pastoral gifts of Reverend Dollins, and we believe that this appointment will enable the congregation to begin anew in a similar way that you began anew eight years ago under this leadership. In the coming weeks, I will work with your staff parish relations committee to identify the gifts and graces that are needed in your next pastor. By prayer, my prayers are with you, Reverend Dollins and his family, as you go through the transitional time between now and July 1st. We go forward in faith, trusting that God is leading us 
into a new day for Anaheim United Methodist Church. Grace and peace, Reverend Mark M. Nakagawa. And may I add that this is both sad and exciting at the same time. We have been blessed by James and his family, but I'm happy to say he's going closer to his own family so he can be nearby them. And we can be excited at change sometimes, and we'll see what happens. So we give our blessings and our prayers to James and his family. Thank you. And to all of you who have been for us a wonderful and healing church and truly a family of God, um, you have welcomed our family with open arms and have worked very hard alongside of us to help to strengthen our church and for its future and for its ministries. Truly you are our family and that connection will never die. Amen. So with that, let us stand and worship God as we join in our opening prayer this morning. Please join me this morning. Walk with us, Spirit of Christ, on this Lenten journey. Show us what to bring with us and what to leave behind. Give us courage to leave behind the past, that we may see new things that lie ahead. Then let us pick up our very best gifts in order to give them to others in your name, that our lives may be complete and our, our hearts, hearts may be made whole in the spirit and joy of Christ, Christ our, our friend. friend. We, pray. we pray. Amen. Amen. this morning is from Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes the way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are exhausted, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the days of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, 
the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second scripture reading for today is from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those who was at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept that common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not, not, do not always have me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray before I offer a message this morning. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week in our theme, Receiving Grace, we talked about the sights and sounds of God's grace. Today we have a story about the fragrance of love poured out for Jesus and for God by one of his followers, Mary, not Mary his mother, but Mary his good friend, sister of Lazarus and Martha. When we think about fragrances like this, we might imagine how they would impact people in a lasting way. We say that olfactory input lasts with our memories longer than nearly anything else. It's such a deep memory that a smell can bring, that a fragrance can offer. I remember that uh, perhaps the most powerful scent I can remember is back to my grandparents' house when my grandmother would be preparing that Thanksgiving dinner and you'd smell the oils and the spices, uh, the obscene amounts of butter and sugar cooking in that <laughs> kitchen. Uh, it's probably uh, good that we didn't eat that meal more than once per year for our own health, but it was the most delicious uh, food, however fattening it might have been. We enjoyed those smells and then the smell of the walk afterwards through the pine forest as we let the breezes of those pine trees pass over our faces as we walked and talked. Those smells will always return me to a sacred and perfectly loving place, a place of unconditional love. And we might think of how this fragrance that filled the room when Mary anointed Jesus' feet would have done the same thing. Please think of a fragrance in your own life, something that you can remember that as soon as you smell that, it brings you back to a place of love and acceptance and joy. We all have memories like this. Think about what you would choose. What is that joyful fragrance that you can hearken back to? Sometimes in my pastoral counseling of people, when people are suffering depression, these things are vital memories that for us to uh, reignite a sense of gratitude in our hearts that we're not mired in depression but we are able we're capable of accessing some blessing that God has given us some fragrance we can remember a psychologist might say think of your happy place to get yourself out of that depression we can also think of a happy smell to transport us from depression to some lighter, more joyful side of life that God has already shown us, that, already has, that God has already given us the smell of. And perhaps this is what Mary, this friend of Jesus, was up to that day. A pound of pure nard, expensive fragrance and perfume. One of the people in our Wednesday Bible study looked, at up, looked up how much this would cost today, and a pound of Spike nard or nard today would cost $3,000. 
And she used it right there. The Bible has a higher estimate. Maybe it was even more rare. 300 denarii, which is what Judas appraises it to have been valued, would have been a year's wages, perhaps $40,000, $50,000. Yes, uh, my penny-pinching <laughs> instincts uh, give me a heart attack when I say that. <laughs> and that's, that's about the reaction that Judas had to, what are you doing? Stop. But both in the extravagance of this gesture and the overwhelming smell, it would have shocked everyone present out of their senses to focus on this act of complete and total devotion to Jesus and to God. Which would have been so important because in these times there was an atmosphere of fear filling the air. First of all, Mary's brother had just been raised from the dead. This was the story before this story. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, from the tomb after he had been dead for four years. There was trauma and there was mourning. And then just after this story will come Hosanna, the, the Palm Sunday story, and then Jesus's quick road to the cross. Jesus had healed many people. He had worked many miracles. He had offended teachers with his teachings. His life was in danger. There was a threat in the air, filling the air around them. So Mary filled the air with something else, with a creative, extraordinary, generous gesture, anointing his feet with the whole bottle of oil, wiping his feet with her hair. I love to imagine that days later when Jesus was going to suffer, when he was unjustly tried and accused and convicted, when he was taken to the cross to be crucified, he might have recalled that overwhelming, sweet fragrance of that room. When he was hosted so lovingly by this family for whom he had worked this miracle of resurrection where Mary poured out this gift out of gratitude for the life of her brother being restored, perhaps he could have remembered that smell, that extravagant, rich smell of spikenard perfume, the sensation of her hair on his feet, the warmth and the love of this household that treated him like a king that day. Hopefully Jesus could have gone to that place in his heart and his mind as one final gift from Mary that he could have brought with him, even in those moments of trial and suffering and pain and human brokenness and sin. We're invited in our times of change to do the same, to remember all the fragrant blessings of God's love and to continue to bestow those blessings on others, anointing their feet in this way, serving others like we have been served ourselves. We had some wonderful insights about this scripture in our Wednesday evening gather worship service. Um, our, our friend Bill, well, first of all, Molly gave a wonderful message about this gift of perfume and how that spikenard may have even been left over and not needed for Lazarus's uh, death anointment because he was raised from the dead. Perhaps they had some extra wonderful, valuable spikenard lying around the house. And this was a perfume that was used to anoint the dead. And Jesus says as much in this scripture. He says, leave her alone, Judas. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. Only Mary chooses to pour it on his feet before Jesus dies so that he can enjoy it, so that he can have this gift and appreciate it today. One of the members of that worship experience on Wednesday, Bill, said how beautiful that she gave it to Jesus. We didn't need it for Lazarus after all because of your miracle working ability. So let me give this to you completely, all of it. Anoint you now before your death so that you can enjoy it and receive it and remember it. 
We have good Bible students in that Wednesday <laughs> study. Um, we're invited to give these kinds of extravagant gifts, even in those times of anxiety and change. Now, if any of us poured out this kind of a gift in the sanctuary, uh, we'd have several of our allergy people running for the hills. Uh, so uh, we have to take this metaphorically. Even a small amount of perfume in the sanctuary can send a couple of you running. I realize that. But we're invited to give this fragrant offering, these gifts to people who need them most. And especially when we go through challenges and changes. This, needless to say, is a time when I am facing great change with Serena and our family, and so are you. Whenever there's a pastoral change, this is what happens. And Methodist churches and Methodist pastors are accustomed to these transitions as well. When I first got this call, it happened to be the day that I was also diagnosed with COVID-19. <laughs> and it was a, a challenging time to hear this news, but it also gave us plenty of days at home to think and pray about this. When we receive calls like this as pastors, we are expected to say yes. That is the anticipated answer. The cabinet and the bishop say, we have discerned for you a call to this other congregation. And Reverend Mark Nakagawa, our district superintendent, explained that very well in his letter to our church. Um, previous bishops have said there is no choice whatsoever. Uh, just say yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, whatever the case may be. But this bishop doesn't work that way. Um, on behalf of the bishop, our district superintendent said, if you have any strong objections, you can let us know. And please pray about this for a couple of days and call us back. And we did so. And when we realized that this new appointment is three times as close to my aging parents, uh, my father is now 80 years old, my mother is 78, and uh, much closer to Serena's brother and his family and their daughters of nine and six years old, and uh, much closer to my own brother and his wife in Escondido, we realized that this could draw us closer as, as a family in an important time when we could support especially um, our elders and the children in our family. So after speaking about it with Serena and with our sons and praying a great deal about this decision, I called the district superintendent and said, all right, yes, let's do it. This is always an um, overwhelming transition but the scripture blessed me in the midst of this, and hopefully it will bless us as well, because it reminds us that Mary kept a cool head in the midst of dangerous times, even when she knew her teacher may be in trouble, may even be executed soon. She kept giving. She kept pouring out whatever blessing she had on hand to wash his feet. As this story continues, and we remember a week from this Thursday, Holy Thursday, Jesus will kneel at the feet of his disciples and wash their feet. Peter will protest and say, Lord, you shouldn't be washing my feet. I should be washing your feet. And Jesus said, let it be this way for now. But we remember Mary's already done it. Mary's already washed his feet with something much more valuable than water, with this oil and with her hair. She did the first foot washing. She obeyed her instincts and the Holy Spirit to give this gift. This has been a remarkable church to be in service alongside. You continue to give. Even through this COVID season, through this pandemic, our church did not contract or constrict its giving. No, our church doubled its ministries and multiplied the food pantry and clothing ministries. And we connected with people through that who have become church members in this work. We have 20, 30 people involved in volunteering each week for this ministry. And 170 families are fed every single week. I thank God for the work of our provisions team, Sandy Duff, Lee Strom, 
Not only that, our church has grown in strength. We've started a new Wednesday contemporary worship service that's a real blessing to our young adults and others, our young families and others. We have also restocked our church committees, our leadership teams, from finance to personnel to missions. You have grown and strengthened those committees with your stepping up, your volunteerism. This church has a long history of continuing to give gifts of total devotion, even in times of change and stress. I thank God that your total devotion has kept this church strong and healthy and will continue to do so in the future. I trust that God will send the right person to be the pastor of this church. The conference knows very well what a healthy and vital congregation this church is and how much we are active in the community. And for that reason, this church will attract and uh, I'm sure receive a gifted pastor very soon. In the meantime, we remain family. We always will remain God's family. Amen. We gather around this meal today, this table, the Lord's table, the bread, in the cup, we remember that in his time of trial, the night before his crucifixion, Jesus showed his total devotion to his disciples as he broke bread and shared the cup saying, this is me, my body, my blood given for you. When I die, let it be understood that this is my gift to you. Receive it as such, as a meal that will last not only in this lifetime, but forevermore. For this meal is a foretaste of a heavenly banquet, an appetizer of a meal that continues on forever. When we receive this bread in this cup, when we see each other's faces in the sanctuary taking this bread and this cup, we share in a moment that truly is heaven and a meal that will continue long after we have gone on to glory. Let us open our eyes and see God in our midst as we take Holy Communion, as we receive this gift which Jesus continued to give even in his moment of trial, this love and grace that he offers us here in this place and forevermore. It's this way that these words of the prophet Isaiah will be f fulfilled among us. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God will soon do a new thing among us and make a way for us that we have not yet seen. Let us look forward to that sweet smelling place together. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing together, fairest Lord Jesus.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your grace, which is sweeter than every hardship we ever know. We rejoice in the sweet smelling fragrance of song and Christian fellowship shared in this place for meals shared with one another, for laughter, for embraces, for Christian love. We ask that you would consecrate our work today, the offerings and pledges that we give for your work that continues on indefinitely into the future, reaching many, many lives. Oh God, may the generous giving of time and talents and treasures continue on to touch those who especially need your care, those who are lonely, hungry, or without homes. We give you thanks and praise, especially for the offerings of the talents and the hard work of the people of this church who lovingly, joyfully give so many hours of their time. We thank you that this sacred work of Christ gives us life and strengthens us as your church. Help us to pour out whatever creative offerings we can, like wonderful Mary who poured out her gift of perfume for Jesus. Let us give our best and with our whole hearts in total devotion to you and to those who are most in need. And when change and challenges come, help us to smile at the new things, open our eyes to the blessings you reveal so that we may never cease loving in this life and in the life to come. So consecrate our lives, consecrate our gifts, our time, our talents, our treasures. Hear our prayers, O God, for peace in this world. We ask that you would miraculously bring peace where there is war and end violence that threatens the innocent. Stay the hand of ruthless leaders who attack those who are innocent in this world and protect the innocent from harm. Continue to heal our earth of illness. May people no longer die of COVID-19 or lose loved ones to this disease. Comfort all those who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones to this sickness. And guide your church into the future spirit of Christ as we seek to remain generous in every way, even extravagantly giving of our time, talents, and treasures so that others may know your provision, your peace, and your grace. God bless the ministries of our church. We offer prayers for the uh, children's and family ministries that we hope to reinvigorate with our giving this year, and for our music ministry, which we pray to support, and especially our Neighbors in Need ministry to the hungry and homeless through gifts of food and clothing. Through our giving, strengthen these ministry goals for 2022 especially bind us together so that we are stronger together than we could ever be alone, so that we could be a brighter light to this community and to your world. We offer all of our prayers in your name, eternal parent, as we lift praises, petitions, and confessions to you now in a time of silent prayer. Dear Father, how good it is to rest in silence, to know that you surround us and uphold us each and every day. And this morning, we pray for our home centered members who cannot be with us in person. 
but whom we care about, and we hope they know that we support them each and every day. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And we ask that you bless this church and all of its ministries. There are exciting things happening in this church, and we bless all those who work to have them come about. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for all those in the military, especially those related to this congregation. But Father, we pray for peace, peace in the world. And we pray for all those who have been pushed from their homes, who don't know where they're going to find their next meal or where they're even going to sleep. Keep all of these people surrounded with love and may there be peace in the world. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for all those in this congregation who, who have given of themselves, who are offering part of their earnings to share your world with our community. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And this morning, Jill Gray asks for prayers for her best friend, Linda, in Arizona, who's going to be having can't breast cancer surgery this Thursday. She's going there to take care of them. She prays for a successful surgery for her best friend, Linda. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray this morning and we give thanks for the time that we have had with James and his family. He has led us, he has healed us, he has brought us together as a family. We bless, we are so blessed to have him for all this time, and we know he will continue to guide others in the future as he moves on. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for the mission of the Methodist Church all over the world, that, that we may bring others to, to know you and to love you. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And let us pray together the prayer that our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us continue in worship, coming forward with your offerings as you are able for the love of God's work.
may be seated. As we gather to celebrate the great Thanksgiving, this prayer which prepares us to receive this holy meal, we remember that this offering of Jesus, his own body, his life, and his blood, is joined with our offerings, our gifts, our sacrifices. And so we sing the doxology of praise, giving thanks to God as we, together with Christ, offer all of our lives to him. So in this spirit, let us join in the great Thanksgiving prayer. The Lord be with you. joyful thing always, everywhere, to give thanks to you, creator of heaven and earth. In infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we fell into sin, your love remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people to cleanse our hearts during this season, to prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that fervent in prayer, fasting, and works of service, and renewed by your word and sacrament, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, I am God and which they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem as he rode on the donkey. As we sing Hosanna in the highest, we give thanks and praise to you because you also came as a redeemer who would give your life to redeem this world, to empty yourself, taking on the form of a servant and being born in our likeness as human beings. You humbled yourself, Lord Jesus, became obedient to death, even the death on a cross, you took unto yourself our sin and death and offered yourself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of our whole world. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, O God, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your wonderful acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. We offer our, our church and each one of our lives, our time, our talents, our treasures, as sacrifices of love for the blessing of others. So God, we ask that you would bless this gift, consecrate our giving as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Spirit, make us one with Christ. 
pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet forevermore. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. God, because there is one loaf, we who are many are your body, the body of Christ. This bread which we break, surely it is a sharing in the body of Christ. And this cup over which we give thanks, truly it is a sharing in the cup of Christ our Savior. The table is ready. This is the Lord's table. Whatever our background, any who follow in the way that leads to life, following in the love grace of Christ, our welcome, whatever our background might be. We will receive today the bread into our hands and take the cups that are provided for us for this communion meal. Let us lift our hearts and see God's presence among us as we share in this holy meal. Amen.
pray with me the prayer after communion? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us go from this place to share this sweet smell with others. And may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit remain with us forevermore. Amen. Amen.